Craig Way, Longhorn Radio Network. Uh, Brock, has it sunk in about being the winningest player in Texas basketball history, and what does that mean? Not quite. You know, we're so focused on the next game at hand and trying to get better even through this 48-hour stretch before we play Tennessee tomorrow. So uh, it'll be a couple days, maybe a couple weeks before that really sets in. John Sartori, WVLT. Dylan, uh, what do you remember from uh, the last matchup with Tennessee last season, and what do you, I guess, take away from that that you hope to carry into tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, I've got a lot of experience playing Tennessee. I used to go to Vanderbilt. Um, they're a super physical team. Um, we compared them, um, the physicality-wise, probably to Houston from the Big 12. So we know that um, we're just going to have to come out, match that physicality, um, and play hard on defense to give ourselves a chance to win the game. Ryan Schump at Rocky Top Insider. Max, just what stands out about Zakai Ziegler's game? Uh, I mean, just the kind of the, the way he um, controls the game, the, the way he um, plays with pace, um, you know, kind of looking to get downhill um, and create for his teammates. So, um, you know, it'll be a, a collective job um, on a defensive end for us. To our left. Uh, West Rucker, 24-7 Sports. Brock, I know, I guess starting next season, Tennessee and Texas would be a conference game, but it almost maybe feels like it already is. I guess this is the third year in a row. Is it, is it weird to play a non-conference team that you know this much about a little bit? It, it is a unique circumstance. Um, and, you know, with the history of Rick Barnes being at Texas and Coach Terry working under Rick Barnes and myself, you know, watching the Texas program when Rick Barnes is there, we're very familiar with Tennessee, and it's going to be another fun game to carry the last three years into tonight and then moving into the SEC next year. Other questions. Also, we have some people on Zoom who have a question. Please use the raise hand uh, function. We'll get a question to you. Anyone else in the room? West Rucker, 24 7 Sports for, for Dylan and, and for Max, if you don't mind. Obviously, y'all won the game yesterday. That's what you came here to do. But I'm sure you wanted to play a little better offensively. Do you feel like that was something Colorado State was doing, or were y'all just missing shots or out of rhythm? What what caused some of that? Uh, I feel like um, I guess me and specifically got some really good looks that we miss um, that that we've made you know throughout the season. Um, I mean, so it was just I mean we we kept shooting the next shot with confidence. I mean we put in a lot of work. Um, but I mean, um, you know, when shots aren't following, um, the, the emphasis is on the defensive end even more to get stops down there and, um, you know, not let the other team score. Dylan? Yeah, I think Max hit on the head there. Shots that, you know, usually fall or weren't falling yesterday, we got good looks. Shoot the next one with confidence. Um, but in March, you have to be able to win in, in multiple ways. You can't always rely on your offense. Um, your defense has to travel night in and night out. Um, we feel like it did last night, and that's why we had a chance to win the game. Uh, Josh Newman, LoneStarLive.com. For any of you guys, when you see Dalton connect on film, what makes him so difficult to stop? And I guess for Brock and Dylan, you've seen him once before live. How much has he grown as a player from year to year? Uh, he's made a huge, huge step as a player, you know, moving over to Tennessee, becoming the SEC Player of the Year. And he's an extremely potent player. You know, he can shoot the ball, shoot the ball far away from the basket. He's extremely athletic, a well-rounded player. Um, I mean, he's just dynamic, and we're going to have to put a lot of focus on the working to stop him. Dylan? Yeah, I think Brock hit on the head there with that answer. Other questions? Max, uh, when it comes to a game where if shots aren't falling early, does it does it bring up an issue to, to make sure to block it out of mind and go, or is it just, you know, like they say, the old relief pitcher gives up a home run, you just keep firing away? Is that something you process through or just put it out of your mind and keep going and come back ready to shoot the next one? Yeah, I think I definitely come back ready to shoot the next one. Um, you know, I put in a lot of time in the gym, so really just trusting my work, um, you know, never losing confidence in myself. I mean, I've had plenty of games where I've 
missed a lot of shots, but I'm always keep shooting the next one with the exact same comments I shot the first one with. Wes Rucker with 24-7 Sports. Rodney, I think Rick said last night he wasn't trying to speak for you, but he thinks that if, if either one of y'all were asked, do you want to play the other one in this tournament, the answer would be no. Do you, do you agree with that? No, Wes, I would, I would completely agree with that. Uh, Coach is family to me. You know, he's uh, my, uh, one of my biggest mentors. Um, he's been incredible throughout my career. We, uh, we love each other. Um, you know, but we also, at the end of the day, he's super competitive. I'm super competitive. When the game starts, you know, it'll be about our players and the guys on the floor. Um, you know, and, you know, that's kind of the relationship we have. We, we talk often and uh, congratulate him. The last time I had interaction with him was congratulating him on winning the regular season, um, you know, conference. Uh, it's always really hard to do, and uh, he, uh, he has a great ball club this year. To our right, Coach. Uh, Josh Newman, LoneStarLive.com. Rodney, again, when um, when Rick was in here last night, your name came up, of course. He said that uh, that coaching Texas was your dream job. Is that accurate? As a young assistant, was that your dream job to coach Texas? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I was, I'd worked at UNC Wilmington for uh, a great coach and a mentor of mine as well, Jerry Wainwright. Uh, and uh, when the opportunity presented itself at Texas, uh, it, it was a no-brainer. and and uh, I pretty much sprinted there. I mean, I was offered a job by Kelvin Sampson at Oklahoma, and I ended up turning that job down prior to taking the Texas job. But, uh, uh, yeah, it was a lifelong dream and an incredible opportunity to work with Coach Borns over the years uh, that we were together. We had incredible success, and uh, we did everything except win a national championship. To all right. Yeah, Ronnie, you touched on it a little bit last night with what Dylan has meant to your, your team this year. What, what has he just meant to the program in general, and what, what has he done this year to kind of grow his game and put up the numbers he's been putting up? You know, the uh, latter part of last season really came on for us in a big way from a scoring standpoint. Um, you know, he had been a star in his role uh, prior to that in terms of being a guy that's a cerebral player, cerebral defender, rim protector, uh, but really stepped it up from a scoring standpoint the last part of that season and going into this spring and summer, you know, we challenged him to be a guy that also continued to take it to another level. Instead of making one three a game, we made one three or four threes a game, you know, and uh, gave us great inside presence last year as well. But but I think he was injured the first part of this season, coming back from a from a uh, from surgery and things of that nature there. But he was really engaged with our team from the very beginning of the year. I mean, he was basically an assistant coach. Uh, and when it was time for him to play, I thought that was a real smooth transition because he had been so vocal and so involved with the team that he just stepped right in, and it, it was a really good transition for us, uh, you know, coming off an injury and not playing the first part of the season, and he just took off. I mean, he, he really worked hard on his shooting, and, uh, you know, as a result of that, you know, I thought he had a great year shooting the basketball for us this year. Back right. Ryan Shumpert, RTI, just from watching on tape, what makes Jemai Meshack such a good defender? I think with the energy and activity that he plays with, uh, he's athletic. He's a guy that can guard basically anybody on the floor. He can guard a big, switch off guard a point guard, um, plays with a great motor. Um, he's a tough matchup. You know, offensively, he crashes the glass really hard. So you have to match his energy when he comes in the game. Rodney, what, um, what makes Dalton Connect so tough to deal with? Well, he has NBA size and he's an NBA player, <laughs> for one. Um, we've seen him grow. I mean, we played him when he was at Northern Colorado uh, as a youngster. And, you know, he's really, uh, you know, bulked up his body right now a little bit in terms of that. He plays a lot stronger and more aggressive. Uh, he could always score the basketball. He's a three-level scorer. He can score in transition. Uh, he can score getting downhill. Um, he's a terrific player with size. And uh, I think that's the one thing. He could raise up and shoot over smaller guards. And uh, he's a tough guard. You know, you gotta, you got to do a great job of really trying to uh, really just contain him. You're not going to stop a great player like him from scoring. He's going to score. Uh, but, but it has to be on our terms. And hopefully not let him have one of those crazy nights where he goes off for 30 points. Wes Rucker, 24-7 Sports. 
Rodney, is it, I know obviously next season this would be a, a conference game, and you all have played the past two seasons. Is it, how rare is it to play a non-conference opponent where there's this much familiarity, where it almost already feels like a conference game? I mean, it's basically our third year we're playing right now. So, you know, we had the two. You alluded to the fact that we were in the SEC Challenge with the Big 12 Challenge, and we played back-to-back -back years, home and away. Um, again, I think, you know, we're very familiar with, you know, how Tennessee plays in terms of, um, you know, they're going to be very physical. It's a very physical team. Uh, they're a team that's going to, you know, rely on a lot of paint touches. I mean, they, they shoot a lot of threes and make threes, but they're heavy in the paint, you know, playing inside out. Um, really good defense. They're going to sit down. They're going to they're going to guard you really hard. They're going to play heavy gap, um, and going to try to limit the, limit you to to one shot and out. Um, so, I, again, I think it helps. I think it helps with them likewise in terms of uh, uh, you know we're very familiar with knowing what each other wants to do and the strengths and the weaknesses of, of both. McKee 24-7. Rodney, I'm just curious, with Jonas Adu, how have you seen him improve and what kind of stands out uh, about the jump that he's made from sophomore to junior year? <clears throat> he's made a huge jump. I mean, the thing that jumps out about him is his size. I mean, he's a, he's a big kid uh, who runs the floor, carves out space uh, offensively uh, with his hard duck ends. He's really tough on the glass. His shot blocking ability changes games as well. Um, I thought last year uh, it was hard for him to get on the floor. They had some other guys that were pretty physical players uh, that, that took up the majority of the time. Uh, but going against those guys every day, you can see how he's improved. You know, Olivier played really well against us last year. Uh, and uh, Adu didn't get a chance to get on the floor a whole lot. You know, but watching him from where he was last year to where he's at right now, he's, he's really grown uh, from an offensive standpoint and a defensive standpoint. He makes an impact on the game on both ends of the floor. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Coach. Thank you.